this video I will show you a nice one rail kicking system that for example Chris Melling is using very often. I guess a lot of players know that system or have already used it, but I think even those can learn something from this video. So let's start. Everyone knows that situation. We can't hit the 8 ball directly and play it rail first. Basically a one rail kick shot. The shot is very easy because the 8 ball is hanging in the pocket. If we place the 8 ball a little further away, it's getting a little tougher but still very doable. I'm a player who always shields the shot and doesn't use much kicking systems. But I know that many people out there are interested in systems that they can rely on. So I'm going to show you how to measure these kick shots. This is our ghost ball. That means where the cue ball has to hit the 8 ball in order to send it to the corner pocket. We now have to mirror the ghost ball. So we take the distance from the center of the ghost ball to the rail. And then we mirror it and now have two ghost balls. Both are exactly the same distance from the rail. All we have to do now is to aim to that imaginary mirrored ghost ball. And if we do that, the cue ball should exactly hit the real ghost ball, because the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So let's get back to our 8 ball example. The first thing we have to do is to put the tip of our cue to the center of the ghost ball and have the cue to that 90 degree angle to the rail. We put our finger on the point where the cue touches the rail. Now we shift our cue till the tip is exactly where the rail is. So where our finger on the cue is now, is the center of the imaginary mirrored ghost ball. All we did was this, but only in a different way. Now we are looking from our finger towards the ghost ball and check where the cue ball on the way from its current position to our finger will hit the rail. This is our contact point on the rail. So we now only have to aim towards the point on the rail and we will make the 8 ball. And this not only works for balls that are close to the rail and to the pocket, it works for all kind of one rail kick shots. Here we again have to make the 8 ball. So we are mirroring the ghost ball of the 8 ball. We look from the mirrored ghost ball towards the cue ball and determine the point we have to hit on the rail. While walking towards the cue ball, I always focus the point on the rail to not lose the point of course. I am now putting my cue stick on the line from the cue ball towards the point on the rail. Now I can look around and check if it feels right to me while not losing the point on the rail. It's important when using any kind of system that you also put a little bit of feel for the shot into your measurements. Don't rely 100% because for example you could have measured wrong or made some other mistakes. Always double check and put around 20% feel into the shot. But I'm pretty happy with what I measured and have a good feeling to make the 8 ball. So I pulled the trigger and I made the 8 ball. In the next example I show you a different approach that you could also use. Again we could measure that long 8 ball and get that point on the rail. But what we could also do instead is to measure the cue ball. Both methods should lead to the same contact point on the rail of course. What we shouldn't forget on all these shots is that the cue ball doesn't just travel at the angle of reflection. It depends on how hard or soft you hit, how high or low and of course if you add left or right English to the cue ball. So you gotta be very careful when playing this shot. If you want to know more about that topic you should definitely watch my video changing the angle when hitting a rail. In this video I am showing you how you can manipulate the cue ball when hitting a rail. Well, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned something new. Consider to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Thanks for watching guys, see you at the next video, take care.